Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I know there are more comments out there, but I want to come back to the panel, and I want to try and focus our discussion a little bit, because otherwise we're, and we're touching on a huge range of things. Um, Dominique, in your conclusion, you put your finger on something that I think is, is, is fundamental, which is that the emerging powers still show an unwillingness to take the responsibility which is theirs, whereas perhaps the declining powers, in spite of saying it, they don't recognize their decline. I think there's also a more complicated picture in here, and I take Pierre Lévy's comments uh, to heart at not exaggerating the, the blackness, but nonetheless, we have a rising China. We have a very resilient US, actually. I mean, when you look at, in spite of the economic crisis and everything else, the extraordinary capacity of the US to reinvent itself. And we have in between, I would say to our panelists here, Europe, including Russia, very much squeezed between these two. It's not, I don't believe, in a G2 world. But nonetheless, you have, so you have a world with Europe and Russia squeezed, and I don't think prepared really to assume their global responsibilities, and the emerging powers squeezed and not prepared to accept their global responsibilities. Now, whether that be in combating terrorism, in nuclear proliferation, or just in conflict resolution, if you look at the world today, again and again, we end up relying on the Americans to bring a solution. Is it the Balkans? Is it Africa? Is it Afghanistan? Unless the Americans get involved, nothing gets done. What are we going to do about that? Who'd like to begin? Mr. Imura, and then I'll come to Mr. Shitrit. Yep, you'll be on. Yep. Uh, I think I will come back, uh, I will uh, uh, refer, I would like to refer to what uh, Monsieur uh, Colomb said uh, in answering your question. Um, I think when uh, we uh, think about this kind of problems, I really, we really have to think uh, for, uh, on one hand, globally, but also on regionally. Uh, what is happening globally can affect uh, what is happening surplus, uh, locally. And what is happening locally, for example, in my uh, intervention, I explained about uh, what is happening strategically uh, in East Asia, can affect uh, <clears throat> the uh, global situations. And uh, uh, what is important is uh, to find out what is happening, uh, the surplus in the regions, in each regions, on a strategic level. But because Mr. Imura, take Japan in mm. particular. Here is the world's, you know, second largest, third largest mm. economy. What responsibility does Japan take? in really leading on conflict resolution. It's always coming second or coming third or saying, well, we'll pay for it, but it's not up to us to sort it out. Well, uh, I'm sorry, uh, let me continue to one right. thing. So I think uh, how to contribute to uh, uh, local strategic balance, establishment of local strategic balance. This is very important point. Unless we have strategic balance in the regions, uh, we cannot uh, prevent the conflicts. To occur. So this is the first point, and this is the point that I wanted to emphasize in my intervention. And secondly, uh, now we have to Japan, China, and uh, every country in East Asia, we have to address to each uh, conf potential conflicts like uh, nuclear, uh, North Korean nuclear development, and future maybe there may be a, a problem regarding Taiwan, and also uh, <coughs> in many areas in in Asia. And then uh, I think uh, we need to approach, uh, to have double approaches. One is uh, to find out a uh, regional system to address ourselves to those but conflicts. But if I may and come back, China and Japan are, let us admit it, obsessed with each other. Mm -hmm. You want regional balance, yes. 
But what are China and Japan doing when we have an East Timor or an Aceh or a Mindanao in the Philippines? Mm. What are China and Japan, the real regional powers, doing to sort out the conflicts in their own backyard. No, we wait for America, we wait for the UN. In Aceh, we brought the European Union in. This is insane. You're not picking up and doing the job. Well, um, I'm, uh, as I'm a special envoy for the Middle East, I uh, would like to explain what we are doing in the Middle East. And think, I think for my... But you were ambassador in Indonesia. Uh, yes, and uh, well, I will come back to what we are doing in Indonesia. <laughs> You are very provocative, so I want to be provocative <laughs> as well. In the Middle East, uh, what we are uh, doing uh, is, uh, uh, number one, assisting Palestinians. We have been spending, uh, we are uh, one of three major donors in terms of our assistance to Palestinians. Yeah. And uh, be believing that having statehood uh, <coughs> for the Palestinians is the key for this establishment of peace. And if you take a look at uh, what uh, is happening in East Timor or in other conflict region, uh, we, what we are doing uh, <coughs> is... You help pay the bills. Pay the bills, yeah. but also politically, for example, in case of Middle East, yeah. uh, we are urging Israeli uh, to come up uh, <coughs> and fulfill the obligation under yes. the roadmap. And uh, uh, also we are asking uh, Palestinians to of your, the obligation as well. Right. So I think... Can I, okay. Yeah. I, I take the point. And mm. Forgive me for provoking. It's very, okay. I'm sure, <laughs> unoriental of me, but nonetheless. Yeah. Mr. Shitrit, you want to come I, in? I think that uh, local, there's a question of local and global, and I believe that the problem that local governments are totally despair from the possibilities of having uh, solutions about the global system. It doesn't work. Therefore, every global country, every local country, try to take care of its own problems because it cannot wait until somebody will come and save them. Especially when you speak about countries who are developed enough, have the system democracy to deal with the problems they are. Now, something about uh, what, your chairman, what you said before, and I would like to relate to it. I think the uh, United States cannot be the, the guard of the world, cannot be the police of the world. And you cannot correct the situation in the world by necessities. President Obama talking very nicely everywhere to North Korea to engage with Iran, etc. Let me, let me guess, it will not work. It will not work but it is, but because there is a lot of naivety in the way American thinks. I can just bring the example that America was a very, play a big role at the time to make the Shah of Iran stepping down because they believe that he did not kept the human rights in Iran. The result of that is we have Khomeini and we have much, much, much worse government in Iran. It doesn't serve the cause. Not every American value is prevail in different parts of the world. Condoleezza Rice, during the last uh, administration, believed that every country should be democratic first and then we have peace. It is a total nonsense. <laughs> there are many, many countries in which democracy is not an option because they need to have a very strong ruling in order really to keep people online. If, let's be clear, if the Middle East were democratic, Islamist parties would probably win in the great majority of countries. That's, what, hap that's what happened in the, in the West Bank and Gaza with the Hamas. Yeah. The Hamas is an organization which do not recognize Israel. He has on his agenda to exterminate the state of Israel. They won the election and we have to deal with it with the but Fatah. How much of the responsibility it. for that is Israel's? Yeah, we have our mistakes as well. Mm. I agree. We have our mistakes. And I would like to say that uh, what uh, Mr. Munir uh, Abdel Noor from Egypt have said, first, thank you very much for the compliment. It is unbelievable that I have a compliment from Egyptian head of opposition in Egypt. It is, uh, it is really warming up. 